Now you've seen the Lord in effect. You have seen it. You've witnessed the Lord's spirit. You were there. Now it's time to pay the Lord. Pay him off. Pay that man his money. Now while I collect the offerings, Brother Pathos here will lead us in a song. Brother Pathos. I think I saw him on the hill the other day. I think I saw him when I watched the children play. But when I opened up my voice to sing him praise, he ran away. Ran away. Wait a minute, hold on. This ain't working. Oh, one dollar, what's this, one dollar? No, no, we tried to do it the Lord's way. Now we're going to do it the good old 125th Street 7 Avenue way. Get up the money now, pay the Lord. Let's start the show. <laughs> Your host, Miss Steph, John, and myself, Keith. How is everyone doing today? Let's start off with the lady of the podcast. Steph, how you doing? I am amazing. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Well, you're not a sir. But... <laughs> I'm about to say. Is this funny, inside, man? inside joke between me yeah. and John. Yeah. <laughs> Dating back years and years and years and years. But I'm doing well. Uh, very, very, very busy week, weekend, but blessed to be here and feeling pretty good. Feeling, feeling pretty good. John, how you feeling today? I'm good, man. Um, busy week last week. Um, thank God for the weekend, even though it felt like 30 minutes. Uh, I got an opportunity to see my mom. I hadn't seen my mom in a over a month. Woo. So Ooh. um yeah. No, you walked into Hellfire and Brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> that is an understatement. Um <laughs> but yeah, it was good to see my mom. Uh and she spent some time with baby girl. That's always nice. But uh just a wonderful, hot, oppressively hot. Did I say it was hot weekend? Oh man. Mm-hmm. That it was, my friend. Still hot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we got a jam-packed show for you guys today. This is going to be um, an excellent show, exciting show. We always think that every show is exciting, but this one is going to be pretty jam-packed. Got a couple of guests coming on for you guys. Let's start off with what's been going on the past week as we record this. You know, we dropped our YouTube um, video, the first video on our YouTube page, Short Desk Podcast. If you don't have the link, just type in the Short Desk and Podcast and you can find us on YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That will give you alerts of when you will, rec- when the new videos are posted, you'll know then. And it helps drive up our subscriptions. And, you know, we just want to continue to put out great content for you all. This will be in video form. Sometimes it may be the podcast that we're recording that you'll see the videos on. And other times it may just be extras like it was last week. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to make sure to drop at least one video per week. We may be able to put in more than that. But as we continue to grow with the uh, YouTube channel uh, for the time being, we'll be dropping off episodes maybe once a week. And, you know, like I said, maybe more. But thank you guys for the support. We got some excellent feedback. Really, uh, people enjoy the podcast being on in video form so that was pretty new 
there's a lot that's been going on last week and hell the start of this week but one of the big stories that kept getting overshadowed to sh- to Steph's chagrin <laughs> is <laughs> Beyonce <laughs> on Friday <sighs> dropped her new album Renaissance and it just seemed like everybody that is in entertainment or in some type of form of yeah, well, entertainment woke up and said, hey, I want to drop some news today as well. So, Steph, she is our Beyonce uh, fan here. That, uh, um, the Beehive consultant for the show. Yeah. So, let's talk real quick about this Renaissance album. Yes. How was it? I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. What are your thoughts on this album and where does it rank again amongst the other albums that she's had? To be honest, um, at first listen, it wasn't like, oh, you know, for me, only because, um, you know, me, when I listen to music, I'm all about lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. And I was so concentrate. I was concentrating on the, the beats for some reason. I don't know why, but I will say that, first of all, this is. Um, This album is definitely an acquired taste. This is what I love to call a grown woman album. Um, People that like the bops and they like old Beyonce and they like get me body Beyonce. They're not going to like this album. This album is for grown women that are, are walking into their truths that are finally comfortable in their skin. This album is definitely. Wasn't the last album like that? Uh, No. Lemonade was something totally different. Lemonade was, I'm going to learn to love myself. This album is, I love myself. Mm. So let's get into the big controversy. Cause I know you, <laughs> so you sitting down here and you buttering and honeying and everything up, which yeah. I expected. But well, let's you, get you into the real controversy. Talk about Nas's ex-wife. Let's, the let's, play, let's, let's talk about it. Because <laughs> you, along with others, mm-hmm. have been all about supporting Khalees. No matter yeah, what she yeah. says. I still but for Khalees. this weekend, <clears throat> let me tell you something. The minute she starts speaking her truth, walking and being comfortable in her skin as a woman, the beehive wanted to kill her like they killed Macaulay Culkin and my girl. Let's you talk. Know what? <laughs> <laughs> you are so colorful. That's I a bar. It. Yes. He's so extra. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I love Ms. it. Miss Lee said nobody reached out to her. Now let's let's be honest, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's be totally honest. Okay. The the vitriol, the ammo is really <sighs> the 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 beginning shots, the front line of the the shots mm-hmm. should be placed towards Chad Hugo and Pharrell Williams Absolutely. of the Neptunes. Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, but but that doesn't mean that you know in her anger that other people would not feel some of the uh, what do you call those? The wrath. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of that. And do you think and what we're talking about is Khalees went on a rant. Khalees, the, the young lady, if for some of you don't know, she's an R&B singer. She was pretty big in the early 2000s. She was signed to Star Trek, which was the Neptunes mm-hmm. uh, record label at the time. She was also <laughs> married to Nas, the rapper. She had a very big song called Milkshake. Um, and then also she had another song that was pretty big. I can't even think of the name of it. With Shauna from uh, DTP. Jeez, I can't think. No, it was with Too Short. Bossy. Bossy, bossy. Mm-hmm. Those are just some of her songs. She had a very big songs, though. I'm yeah. just naming those two because they were pretty big in popular culture, pop culture. Uh, Beyonce sampled a song of hers, and uh, Khalees went on a rant about not being contacted by Beyonce, uh, letting her know that she was going to be sampling the song. Um, also went on a rant because... She pretty much, I guess, in the deal that she signed with Star Trek, she signed all her rights and everything over to them. She gets <clears throat> no residuals on any of the songs that she uh, has made, and, and from what I, from my understanding, so that happened. She also had some uh, 
I would say truthful claims about that were thrown out there about Rihanna. And mm-hmm. when I saw all the pictures and everything, and then I thought about some of the sons, I said, Oh my God, I didn't realize this. But anyways, the main attraction here is Beyonce. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it real quick. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, Steph. Mm-hmm. You mentioned earlier that this album was about walking in your truth, feeling good in your skin. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like Khalees, with her fine self, was feeling good about herself, walking in her truths and cleansing her skin. And she said she had to get some things off her chest and she had to, uh, quote unquote, <laughs> kick that dirt off her shoulders. So you being uh, one of the beehives, what were your thoughts after the initial response? And then what was your thoughts after you gave it some more thought of what happened here? First of all, let me clarify, because some people that I know listen call me a Khalees hater. Um, anybody who knew me in 1999 can tell you when Khalees dropped her first album, nobody knew who she was. And I was bumping that album nonstop. Like I introduced a lot of people to Khalees. Still listen to that, to Kaleidoscope. Um. She has a right to feel the way that she does. I'm not saying she's wrong in how she's feeling. My issue was her method because Khalees always does this. Mm -hmm. She does it all the time. And it seems like, like you said earlier, her anger is always directed toward the wrong people. And I think, you know, now, could Beyonce have picked up the phone and called her? Yeah, that would have been a nice thing to do. But did she have to? She didn't have to. That's not her song. She doesn't own it. Now, Not only that, Pharrell, of course, her deal was messed up and all of this good stuff because Pharrell is a snake. But at the same time, Beyonce put her name in the credits on her album. So guess what? Khalees can now collect a check. But you don't Hmm. hear people talking about that. But shouldn't Sisterhood kicked in and say, hey, Khalees, I'm just reaching out to you. Let you know I'm going to be using your song. I mean, if it was the other way around. She reached out to the person the song belonged to. But if it was the other way around and Beyonce came out with that same statement, you know, doggone well, everybody would have been up in arms about Khalees not reaching out to Beyonce. They have the right to feel that way. Now, now if it it were the other way around and Beyonce did not own that song, I would still say the same thing. But you know, but you know, the masses Mm -hmm. would not have looked at it that way. Now, there is a level. There is a level. Mm -hmm. We know that Beyonce is several levels ahead of Khalees, like Janet is several levels above Beyonce. See, you can let the petty out of this, and your petty is wrong. I understand that that happens in time and everything. I I just don't like seeing, you know, the sisters at war. They're supposed either. to be a united front because we're supposed to believe everything. And then it just seems like uh, when it comes to a man, we, we have to believe the woman. But when it's women against women, now we got to pick sides and who's the stronger yeah. one, right? Yeah. And I don't like Because the man is either. always wrong. Yeah. I, to be honest, I don't always like that wrong. either because the man always is not wrong. always wrong. The man is not always wrong. Oh. I, don't, I don't like that either. But at the same time, it's like... It's a situation, like I said, the man is not always wrong, but it's a situation. How many times in the music industry have we seen men take advantage of women? And more than like most times, it's because they're sleeping together. I don't know if Pharrell and Khalees had, had slept together, they had That's some type of relationship or whatever. But most times, historically, when you have messed up situations like this, it's because there was some type of romantic or sexual involvement. So I'm inclined to believe that at one point there was something going on between the two of them because her dislike, I don't want to say hatred because that's such a strong word. Her dislike toward him has a little bitterness Pharrell. to it. Pharrell. Yeah, toward yeah. Pharrell, Pharrell has a little bitterness to it. Okay. All right. Well, we ain't going to stay on that too long, You're right? But it seems like you really enjoyed it. John, was Renaissance played in your household this weekend? No, sir. Okay. I didn't, uh, I, didn't even, I didn't even know the album came out until you guys just mentioned it. Listen, Beyonce release day is a big uh, a big deal for me. Um, every every time she releases now, you ask me where it stands among her albums. I would uh, say this is probably my 
fourth favorite of hers. Okay. Of the albums. All right. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that. If you guys haven't picked up on this now in over a year's time, John does not know what's going on out there. Listen, let me. Let me <laughs> <laughs> to, to my defense, I heard about the Khalees uh, Beyonce back and forth before. Once again, I was made aware that album had dropped, mm-hmm. so I Damn. heard all about that. You heard about the beef before that? Yeah, I heard about the beef. Before yeah. that. The, and you know what? By the time everybody got worked up about it, I had already heard about the beef. It's like a week going on strong. You know, mm-hmm. ever since the, yeah. the energy track was leaked. And so by the time everybody else, because, you know, I stay tuned in to Black Twitter. That's my news source. Um, mm-hmm. So by the time everybody picked up on it, I was like, oh, this has been going on a week. Y'all late. Mm. All right. Well, that was the Renaissance time here. We. Uh, mm. <coughs> well, OK. Fourth. We'll, we'll revisit that another time. Yes. Had a couple of deaths this weekend in the celebrity news. We had um, legendary Hall of Famer. Um, oh, Jesus. Rings won with being a coach, player coach, player. I mean, he's done it all. Mr. Bill Russell passed oh. away um, at the age of 88. We then also had, uh, oh, God, you know what? I always mess up her name. Is it Nicole Nichols? Michelle Nichols. Michelle, okay. Michelle. From from Star Trek fame, the first black woman to ever kiss a white man on television yes. as she kissed ja- J- Captain James Kirk on a <laughs> Star Trek uh, show in the 60s. Uh, she was uh, Yahura Yuh- on Star Trek. She passed away at the age of 89. And then the lady, and God, I do not have her name in front of me, so please forgive me. Mary Alice. Mary Alice, she passed away. She was on a different world. Um, she was in the Matrix, and wasn't she in Bruce's place too? The that original movie? Sparkle. Yeah, Mary Alice was eighty-eight as well, I believe. And Pat Carroll passed away as well. Pat, that who? Voice, Pat Carroll. She voiced Ursula. Oh, from the Ursula Little from the yeah. Little Mermaid. Yes, yeah. she was like what ninety-five, ninety-six. She was ninety-five. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we had a couple of deaths that happened this week. And like I said, there's a lot that has happened in the last few days. Um, moving on to some news that is, you know, nothing. it's newsworthy. It's nothing to joke about or laugh about. It's actually pretty sad um, when you look at the whole deal. And I'm going to actually read the whole deal about this guy. Um, this article comes uh, courtesy of the griot.com mm-hmm. uh, rapper mystical real name, Michael Tyler mystical is a three time Grammy award nominated new Orleans rapper. He was uh, in the big record label group back in the late nineties. Um, no limit out of new Orleans. He had such songs as um, the man right here. And then as he ventured off of No Limit, Shake Your Ass and um, Danger. I'm sure a lot of people have heard that song before. Well, just today, well, actually, was it yesterday? I'm sorry, not today. Today's Monday. When you guys hear this, it'll be Tuesday. But on Sunday, <laughs> um, Mystical was arrested for uh, sexual assault, uh, accusations of rape, following financial dispute. So I'm going to read this article to you guys and um, you can take it from there. This is again, I say this is sad, not nothing to make light of because no one should ever have to go through this. But, you know, this is the third time. So let's 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 jump into it real quick. Michael Mystical Tyler was taken into custody by Ascension Parish Sheriff's near Donaldsville, Louisiana, a suburban area outside of Baton Rouge. They apprehended the rapper after speaking with a sexual assault victim at a nearby hospital late Saturday night. The deputies state that the victim alleged Tyler had assaulted her and forced her to give him money during a financial dispute. He now is in custody at Ascension Parish Jail and has been charged with first-degree rape, false imprisonment, robbery, 
domestic abuse battery by strangulation and simple criminal damage to property. Tyler has been convicted of sex crime stemming from financial issues in the past. In 2003, the Louisiana native was arrested over a 2002 incident in which he forced his hairstylist to perform sex acts on him and two of his bodyguards in his then Baton Rouge apartment after he accused her of stealing money from him. The attack was videotaped and authorities obtained his copy from a home safe. Tyler pleaded guilty to sexual battery and extortion, extortion and spent six years in prison. He was released in 2010 and is a lifetime registered sex offender as a result. In 2018, Tyler found himself in trouble again in Louisiana over accusations of sexual assault, this time in Shreveport. He was accused of first degree rape and second degree kidnapping. After spending 18 months in custody, he was released in 2020 once the charges were dropped. Um, And they, you know, they go on to talk about his uh musical um accolades accolades yeah yeah Yeah. uh john you're a mystical fan of his music have you heard did you hear about the previous rape charges (laughs) before um this one because this one's pretty fresh but had you heard about his previous uh issues stemming from the past the ones in 2002 I was aware of, not the one, uh, the accusations in 2018. I was not aware of those. I know he's had uh, run-ins with the law in the past that wasn't necessarily um, pegged to sexual assault. But to know that he had three instances of, uh, well, in one instance, I guess, alleged uh, sexual assault because the uh, charges were dropped. Um, I'm a bit surprised. And at this particular point, uh, I'll say I want to wait until all the facts come out. But uh, if you're linked to three cases of sexual misconduct or sexual assault, I mean, at this particular point, it's if there's smoke, there's fire. It seems like if you have a propensity for this deviant behavior. Uh, (laughs) And I'm not certain he's going to uh, get a slap on the wrist or get six years like he did before since he's uh, proven to be uh, a habitual uh, uh, sexual assault uh, perpetrator. Uh, I'm certain if if these charges do stick and uh, he's prosecuted accordingly and uh, facts prove that uh, he was the one or he actually committed these uh, depraved acts then he's probably got a couple of decades on his head if I had to surmise. Hmm. Yeah. But to your, to your point, I was not aware of the 2018 incident, but 2002 definitely. And of course I read a couple of article articles. It wasn't as specific uh, as the Griot's article, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but I was, I was aware of these two cases. Steph, I know you've followed some of the cases in the 2018 and I'm with John. I, I, I'm pretty sure we discussed it before, but I I just don't remember when I saw 2018. I said, Hmm, I don't remember that case. Uh, Do you have any light to shed on possibly why that those charges were dropped in 2018? And what were your thoughts when you saw um, the latest news for his third charge? I can't remember why, but I think wasn't that the case that was involving Juvie's um, juvenile, the rapper, sister. his sister? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Sister. So that's I don't know what happened there, but um, yeah. as someone who has long been a fan of mystical, um, I believe the the brother has a problem. Um, all right, guys. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties and it kind of cut Steph off while she was talking about mystical. So we're going to go right back to it. Steph, you were saying that um, I asked you about, you know, hearing about these charges and we brought up that the charge in 2018 for mystical was actually had to do with juvenile sister. Um, so 
you said as a fan, when we left off as a fan of Mystical, and yeah. you go ahead and continue. Um, it, you know, I, I can say that the brother needs some help. And, you know, it's it's one thing, you know, um, he caught a charge years ago, but like your charges are always centered around sexual assault, man. And, and, finance. and finances and robbery. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, it goes back to when we say, you know, people, they become successful and they still can't lead that life. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm not here to, um, I'm not here to take up for him because I would never. Uh, but at the same time, it's like he is going to have to do some time for this. All these people that are always quick to cancel folks, are they canceling mystical too? Because I haven't heard anything. And, um, yeah. you know, at this point, it's like, I don't think some you said a couple of decades they may not let him out. I know people with rape charges who are doing life sentences because they've had multiple rape charges. And a lot of his lyrics are rapey, if we're being honest. This is true. Yeah, yeah. And you know, where the disappointment lies with him, because I mean it, it anyone it can this can happen to. But you walked in on your sister being murdered. Yes. Or having been murdered. You walked into your house and she was murdered. He had a whole song about it. Mm-hmm. And this is how you choose to honor her? Going around raping other women? Like, bro, you got a problem. And I think maybe a lifetime in prison may help you with that problem. Because you may become the rapee. The rape, no, the raped, (laughs) you know what I mean? Because this isn't cool, man. And to do this and to, you know, this young lady here was at a hospital. And it's always over finance. If people are stealing from you, okay, handle it the legal way, man. You got too much money, too much name recognition to go out like this. And it's a pattern. You know what I'm saying? Now, he admitted to the first one. He said he had a problem, he had an issue. The second charge was, I didn't hear, I it dropped, and then I didn't hear nothing more about it. I don't know why it was dropped. It was I dropped. I find anything. Insufficient evidence, insufficient evidence, i.e. I. E. DNA evidence. They could not put him at the scene because allegedly they had his DNA and another man's DNA, but his DNA mm-hmm. after... They resubmitted because it went to a grand jury twice, and they looked at the the new evidence, and that's when allegedly they decided to drop the charges against him. Mm. Well, he needs to get it together, and if he's guilty of these charges, prison is the only way I think he'll be able to get it together, and not getting out to rape somebody else's daughter. Not for six years. No times 10 no no and you know what's crazy guys <clears throat> and i can say this now because maybe it was the immaturity in me back then when he first went to prison i didn't think about oh he going he rape a woman he's going to prison he deserves to go there right i was like damn man we're gonna be all these years without mystical and he was just about to start eating back up again that's yeah. messed up you know what i'm saying that was my thought process back then as a kid or a young adult, shall I say, and not understanding the the weight of it all and, and, and how wrong it was, period. I mean, I knew rape was wrong, but it was all about, oh, man, I don't want to see one of my favorite rappers go away for a long time. You know what I'm saying? And he's a monster. He's a sicko. He's a monster. And he need to be there. So yeah. that's that. So as I said earlier, you know, we have a jam-packed show today. want to bring on our first guest for today. We discussed earlier in the show how there's been a lot going on in the past week um, with things happening, entertainment world. And one of the big things to come out was the new Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer dropped last week. Wanted to bring on friend of the show. You guys, this is his first time on the show. Mr. Rock, how you doing today, sir? 
how you doing? And this is officially my first podcast appearance too. Really? Oh, wow. So, all right. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, um, Keith. Hey, yeah, what's up, Keith? What's up, John? And what's up, Stephanie? Paul Pierce. Yes. Paul Pierce. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, I'm going to enjoy this already. So. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> well timed, sir. Well timed. <laughs> so Wakanda Forever dropped. Um, there was the San Diego Comic Con festival that went on last week. And was that last week? It feels like it was ages ago. Last two Saturdays. Two Saturdays. Ago. Well, two, two weeks weekends ago. Okay. Ago. Yeah. So yeah. Black Panther trailer dropped. And um as we've we've discussed on the show before, I mean this is going back to the early days. Um, you know, the first 10 episodes, I think, had a discussion about this, John and I and our previous co-hosts. And then we've had, you know, some discussions since. But anyways, Wakanda Forever trailer drop. And it's been a lot of controversy behind it because, as you all have heard, and what was reported is that the character T'Challa, the king of Wakanda, the Black Panther, mm-hmm. uh they advised Marvel advised that they were not recasting that character because Mm. the actor that played the comic book character passed away, which was Chad with Bosman. An unprecedented. Correct. Mm. So the trailer dropped, um, you know, it, 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 if, if this is, uh, if you, if, if you, if you're not, really looking into it if your eyes are kind of blinded you you probably get pretty emotional because of you know they used the right soundtrack to bring on the trailer and um you saw you know that uh they had a mural of chadwick as t'challa you know he's passed away and um you know just a lot of things were going on in the trailer no more he's the uh god what is he the king of the atlantic sea um of the Atlantic, not Atlantic Sea, but they've changed his character. Oh. Go ahead, Rob. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I was saying, yeah, they changed him to, um, uh, I slipped my tongue just that quick, but they're like Mayan, Mayan. like uh, Mayan South correct, America. Correct. Yeah. So they changed that and then they went through the trailer. They're showing, you know, some action. They show Angela Bassett, everybody else that's still in there. And um, at the very end, they show the leg and thigh and foot of the new Black Panther and then the claws came out um, and if you followed the comics at one point uh, when T'Challa was hurt I believe if I remember correctly his sister he, he was, was in a coma. coma right his sister yep. Shuri took over as Black Panther so I'm not going to lie to you when the trailer came out last week I had kind of goosebumps because of how the song came on, but then I quickly realized what was going on and I've, and I've voiced my disdain about it, but I want to, you know, I don't think we've ever had Steph talk about it on the show. Um, and of course, rock, this is his first time on. So I want to leave it open for our guest rock to kind of talk through his feelings about the changes, what this new trailer meant for him. And then we'll go to Steph and then John and then myself. So, Rock, let's talk about it. The the new trailer, how you felt about it, and your thoughts about this whole not recasting T'Challa thing. Right, right. Um, so just really quick, because I don't want people to they're gonna kind of be perturbed by what I'm gonna say later on. <laughs> uh I am a black I am a Black Panther fanatic, um, MCU fanatic, Marvel everything, even before the mm-hmm. MCU. When it was Fantastic Four, Spider Man, everything over at Fox. Literally, I spent maybe a thousand bucks on the last Black Panther movie. Half mm-hmm. of it was on tickets for me and anybody who wanted to go because I was sending yes, everybody. Were. If they said they wanted to go, I, I was remember. buying. I was buying tickets. Right, I sent group homes, elderly people, everybody. Mm-hmm. Right, and the other half was <laughs> for custom dashikis for me and my little boy at the mm-hmm. time. <laughs> so, yes. so, I'm, so, so I'm setting the stage on hey how invested I was and am into this this franchise, right? So, as far as the trailer goes, I've only watched that trailer one time, right? Now, I've seen bits and pieces you know, by watching YouTube commentary or whatnot, 
but I've only watched it as far as me clicking and, paying, clicking and play and watching it all the way through just one time, uh, which is a world's away from the first one because I watched that probably like eight times sitting in Taco Mac the, the night it dropped. <laughs> um, so, uh, so first and foremost, the good part. I already Ryan Coogler, great director. Mm-hmm. I had no doubt that he was going to give us a great trailer. I actually even believe outside of the context of the, everything going on, the movie's going to mm-hmm. be good, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's a layup for him. I mean, at this point, he just he's yeah. pretty good. But with all of that being said, um, like I said, I've only watched the trailer one time. Literally from the opening scene, I was pissed. Mm. <laughs> they showed they showed Nakia walking on the beach playing that somber "No Woman yeah. No Cry." Yep. All right, and they did exactly what I hoped they didn't mm. do which is they are marketing and banking off of Chad with death, emotionally manipulating everybody using a, a real life black man's death. And that, so, so from the, from the beginning, that's why I only watched it one time. Cause from, because especially as, as you watch it go on and, and uh, Angela Bass is giving a great speech. I mean, she's a queen, you know, what you right. expect. Um, and then they, then they showed his mural. That was the other part. I, I can't believe they showed his mm-hmm. face. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I, I just get so, um, I, just, I got, I got, I got angry about it. And I always harken back, you know, it's a lot of situations, but I go back to fast. Was it fast seven after Paul Walker passed? I believe so. I can't so. remember exactly which one it was. So I think it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was about seven. Yeah. Right. It was seven. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and part of me just feels like, like it, with the way they handle fast seven, it was just, Hey, we doing this movie that we plan on doing. And we're going to make sure we show love to Paul Walker, you know, right at the end. But he's going to be a part of the game all the way through, you know, his last hoorah. And then we're going to show a tribute right towards the end. They didn't open up with the first trailer, uh, the debut trailer for the Fast 7 movie with a, a mural or a, a funeral. It, they didn't they didn't market his they didn't market his his death to sell the movie. Um, so. So, yeah. So as far as the trailer goes, that's I. I I watched it one time. Uh, I'm I'm looking around at the reactions and people talking about. It. I cried. I'm like, I'm like, oh, so th- th- this what black yeah, people get, it, huh? This, hey, this and like I said, get. brother, it caught me in the beginning because of the song, right? But I quickly had to shake mm-hmm. it, and I think when I saw the murals, when I shook to my senses, mm-hmm. and I realized what this was yeah, about. Yeah, and yeah, and I I get it. I do get it, but it's kind of hard sitting back watching it happen and watching people respond. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I, you know, I, I see how the white characters get celebrations in their sequels, and it's all like rock and roll music and action and this, that, and the other. And the black people, the, the only franchise, the only black franchise within the MCU, our second movie, Mama crying, she walking on the on the beach, probably pregnant. Uh, she she hurting. Uh, Black women got to hold it down by themselves. There's only one brother in the whole trailer. <laughs> I mean, it sounds just like a a, 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 a '90s. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a '90s a '90s. Hoodie. But you know what? It plays on another stereotype: single black mm-hmm. mother. The father isn't there. This mm-hmm. time, it's because of death, right? But mm-hmm. yep, so, yep, Rob, yep. tell us seeing that, right? Because you're you're giving the emotions, but tell us. What about this movie has you upset? So, so well, a just them not recasting okay. T'Challa. There we go. Right. I, I, I feel like I feel like that decision. I feel like that's a top down decision, and I feel like they're hiding behind everybody else. Right. They're mm-hmm. using everybody else to shield them. First, they they made the decision, they, and they, I feel like they said, "Hey, Ryan and Nate Moore." Uh, y'all, we're going to say that y'all did it because y'all are black, so they can't say anything to y'all. All right, okay, mm-hmm. cool. You know, we go. We'll hide behind y'all first. You hide behind the the grievances of 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 uh, Mr. Bozeman passing, unfortunately. Then you hide behind uh, the two black uh, uh, one of the two black leaders of the of the production, right? To which what billion dollar company would leave it up to hire help to get rid of a p- billion dollar character? I ain't never seen that before in my life, but that's mm-hmm. that. Then. Then the, the trailer comes out, or even the casting, the casting of the movie, right? Um, you know, it was all like when you look at it, it was already kind of um, lopsided as far as the gender from brothers to sisters, mm-hmm. right? Um, but then when they went in to add more characters, 
it was Mbaku and the other four, the four ladies who were still mm-hmm. there, right? Instead of kind of balancing it out to keep to keep that balance like we had in the first one, so everybody could kind of be a part of it. Instead of balancing balancing it out, they just added two more sisters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? They added Riri and they added um, I'm a, I'm gonna mess the name up, but it's the uh, Michelle O'Kella, the the I will destroy you lady from from UK, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, all right. So now they're hiding it behind Chadwick's the grievance of Chadwick's. The directors, quote unquote, said made this decision. Now you put this line of black women in front of it too, so right? The brothers can't say nothing. <laughs> so the brothers, because right. there will be backlash. Right. There, there has been backlash since you know when brothers mm-hmm. have said something. But go ahead, marketing genius, right. and then and then, the, oh, it's genius, it's genius. And then the cherry on top of all of it, like I said, like you said earlier, um, Namor is supposed to be Atlantean, and he's usually depicted kind of look a little Asian to mm-hmm. a certain degree. Mm-hmm. But they've revamped that, and they've kind of added a, a South American Latino aspect to mm-hmm. it, right? So Marvel's like sitting back, like kingpin, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and these layers, these layers of underrepresented people are sitting right in the front of it, and we can never get so. So when we speak about recast T'Challa, we're not even talking about any of those layers, you know. Well, you know what? Let me say this. I'm sorry. There's a recast T'Challa movement going on. And a lot of the things that they say, uh, I agree with most of it, but some things I don't, and I don't want to misrepresent that movement. So I'm going to just say the, uh, give us another T'Challa movement or bring another brother in, call it what you want, but I don't want to mess up that hashtag movement, mm-hmm. right? Um, but, a, but a lot of the, even with, with that movement that's been going on for a year and a half, it's really just about, hey, we want T'Challa, yeah. period. You know, we, you don't have to kill him for the sisters to shine. They shine hard in the Absolutely. last movie, and he was there. And he was Absolutely. there. <laughs> they outshined him in many cases. Uh, they outshined him the whole movie, the, he, which, which was one of my big problems. Hey. Not not because the sisters were outshining him. Don't get it twisted. I enjoy the I enjoy all of that. But my problem is in the comics. If you are a comic reader like myself and like Rocket stated for him, T'Challa is the equivalent of Bruce Wayne plus Tony Stark in the Marvel comics. He is the smartest. He is the most skilled fighter. And he is the richest. And they stripped him of right. everything because he got his ass whooped twice. <laughs> and his sister okay. has to, he's like this dumb, oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, let me make fun of my sandals. And his sister is the inventor. Nothing wrong with that. Right, right. Well, well, I will I will say, I will say, see, for me, if I's going into a set it off movie, sister's supposed Absolutely. to shine. Cool. If I'm going into um, our girlfriends, uh, living single, you know, all of that, sisters are supposed to take the forefront, right? But when you're doing a Black Panther movie, right? I hate to say it, but it's a Black Panther movie. It's T'Challa, period. I don't care what nobody got to say about his mantle yes. stuff. It's T'Challa. He's 99%, 99.9% of the other stories out there. It's T'Challa. You're not going to pull him apart just for everybody to try to treat the treat the mantle like hot potatoes you know what i'm saying it's about t'challa so i'm all for sister shining but if you think back to like blade one you remember blade had the sister nabushi right she was his right hand man the right. whole time right right they mm-hmm. had the little they had a little black girl doing the karate putting in work they had and then of course in nile lathan she had a, she got a she had a little pivotal uh scenes right. in the movie too so sister shine even in the first blade movie way back in 98 mm-hmm. but when you walked out that movie it was about Blade. That was a Blade, a Blade movie. movie. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a Blade right. movie. You know, so I, I think I think I don't want to ramble on because I got I got I got I got I got something that I, that's going to piss people off when I say it, and that's going to be a whole can of worms. <laughs> but yeah, so I, you know, I don't know if y'all have anything to say. I don't want to keep rambling. No, say it. Say it. You guess, man. Say it. Okay. Okay. It. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> now, <laughs> Ryan Coogler was great for Wakanda as a whole. Ryan Coogler was great for the Wakandan co-stars, uh, the co- the the ladies in the cast, the Mbaku's of the world, everybody, right? But Ryan Coogler is the worst thing that happened to T'Challa, period. Ooh. Period, 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 right? Now, now follow me where I'm coming from, right? And, I, and, and I'm saying specifically Ryan Coogler, because if you remember, his first two movies prior to Black Panther was Fruitville and Creed, right? right? So okay. so he's buddies with Michael right. B. Right? Mm-hmm. Now I love Kill Maga character. I saw him choking that uh that elder. <laughs> <like that>. but, <laughs> 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 but 
But I love Killmonger, right? I, hey, I was with him. I wanted him to yes. win at the end. But overall, like when when you when you look at it like a pie chart, right? And you have Ryan Coogler by default. Ryan Coogler's bringing in his homies, yes. right? He's bringing in Michael B. Michael B. is going to get a, a, a good chunk of this this pie chart. 40 percent of the pie is gone for Michael mm-hmm. B. for his development, for his uh, character, all of that, right? Which is great. We love it, but overall, you lose the sight of hey, this is the T'Challa yeah. movie, right? right? Um, so when you're left with that last sixty percent, I think I think that he was kind of caught up in this is our chance and we got to squeeze everything in and let everybody shine. And he just, I think he just lost sight of T'Challa. Uh, and I, and I, I think if you give him to another director, you can at least get that 35, 40% back from Michael B. And maybe that would have went over to T'Challa to give him more time to shine. Even if you're trying to let the whole Wakanda world shine and all of that. Yeah. And, you know, I hate to say it because I was like at, at the time, I'm sure y'all remember, remember in the mm-hmm. group, I was like, nah, get a brother a chance. He's good. He did mm-hmm. crazy. He did mm-hmm. this. I was like, nah, get a black man a mm-hmm. chance. But looking back, looking back, looking back, I would I would rather somebody One else. One of the white uh, dudes. <laughs> he probably would have been a better hey, look, movie. Oh, hey, look. Hey, look. look and, and, and to be real with you, what was actually sad is because I, I believe some white directors would have had blind spots. Like, we would have never got that African versus African American right. thing angle mm-hmm. in the movie. We would have never got that if it was a mm-hmm. white guy. But I do feel like, like once we left the movie, if it was a white director, we would have left that movie not feeling like T'Challa was a disposable Bruh, character in his listen, own franchise. Before we move over here to Steph, the Russo brothers presented T'Challa the, the best, best, the best, the best. When he came Top out on uh, Civil War, that was the first appearance, right? Oh man, Bruh, yep. I said, "Oh my God!" I still get yes. tingles. That's the chills through my body. I, I have a I have a T'Challa post. I got a number of T'Challa posts. I still have a number of them with that original suit from mm-hmm. Civil War. I get tingles when I see that. I like I love yes. this dude. And then I just then I just yes. get sad. Because I, I know what happened afterwards. But Civil War Because ah, Killmonger uh, in the comics, he's a he's a villain, but he's not a villain on the level of say the Joker is with Batman. Ryan Coogler made him a Joker because that was his boy. And as Rock just stated, T'Challa was a disposable character. You did not leave that movie and go, oh, man, that was a great movie. Man, I love T'Challa. You left that movie saying, damn, why did they kill off Killamonger? Right. He was my Mm -hmm. favorite in the movie. Like, Like, I was rooting for him. Mm Mm-hmm. Which should mm. not have been the case. So let's jump mm-hmm. over here to Steph. Steph, you saw the trailer. You've seen the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, what were your thoughts and how do you feel about, you know, the discussion that's been going on um, and what Rock has said as well? Um, He hit the nail on the head when he was saying, you know, how they are playing on his death because they're actually having a funeral. And when I say that, I mean, everybody's planning to wear white to the movies. You know, how last yeah, time we were dressed in our, you know, in our ethnic um and mm-hmm. I got shikis and all this stuff because I know I went to the um to the movie mm-hmm. souped up you know I mm-hmm. had my hair wrapped my skirt everything you know I'm not wearing white to that theater y'all it, it's we didn't even I'm go into end game we didn't even go into end game after Thanos killed everybody talking about let's attend a friend room right they're wearing white they're doing it so I think that was just a ploy to get people to the movies because if they were to either recast him or or not that like they knew people weren't gonna want to come out. I think my only question is if they were to recast T'Challa, who would play him? And I'm not saying no one could, but I was just sitting here thinking like, well, who could it be? You know what I'm saying? It, it's a it's um, a number, number it's a number yeah. of people out there. Yeah. Who would you who would you all have liked to have seen? Me uh, go who? I got my my number one was Trevante yeah. Rose. Ah, Trevante. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Trevante Rose. He got the beard. He got the square yeah. jaw. He got the squinty eyes to make you feel like you should be intimidated in yeah. this moment. He, he, you know, he, I, don't th- I don't know if he's tall enough. I'm about but... to say, he, Trevante is a little short. Yeah, short, but you know, yeah. they could work that out. With Hell, if they knew they was going to have Coogler do the direction of that first movie, they should have just went ahead and put Jordan in that role then because that's his boy. 
and he would have presented T'Challa the way that he's supposed to be presented because ain't no way he would have presented T'Challa that way if Mm-mm. Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan was playing T'Challa. No. And 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 you know, as far as like who would they, who would they have recast? You know, it's a lot of talk of people saying, "Oh, they would have." You know, he was the new person would have kind of caught a little hell or X, Y, and Z. I promise you, if, if just follow me for a second, if you go back to twenty December twenty twenty when they made the announcement that they weren't going to recast, mm-hmm. if Kevin Feige had played a video that said something along the lines of, uh, I'm paraphrasing, I'm just making this up. Um, if I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Um, from the time we seen T'Challa on screen in 2016, Chadwick Boseman has been fighting uh, through colon cancer, mm-hmm. I believe, mm-hmm. to bring this character to light. Um, so from the from from Civil War to his solo movie to the two Avengers movies, every time you've seen him on screen, he was fighting this battle, trying to live to bring this character to us. And to honor Chadwick Boseman, we're going to keep this character alive because he fought to stay alive mm-hmm. to bring us this character. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're going to recast, you know, maybe not announce anything anytime soon, but we're going to recast, right? If he says something like that, all of these people talking about we need to honor Chadwick by killing the character would mm-hmm. be singing a different tune, right? And the, and this this the biggest part. They would have gave they would they would have given the new actor grace because the whole notion and the, the feeling would have been we need this character right now. We need it all. Mm-hmm. We saw the kids dressing up, boys and girls, in 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 Black Panther costumes. We mm-hmm. we need this character, you know, for everybody. So we're going to reserve a whole off on you know criticizing them because because of what it represents. Kind of how we, how black folks did with Obama. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of just be able to quiet a little bit. You know, <laughs> you know, we had criticism. You know, so oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. So, so I, I feel like, it, and and of course, in the same manner that Disney is using black folks and other folks as a, as a buffer, black folks would have been a buffer for that character because if any other group, any other non black group has anything to say about the character, we'd have been jumping in to say, "Hey, look, hey, he just got the, he just got mm-hmm. the role. This mm-hmm. is his first time doing it. Give him time. Maybe in the sequel, maybe the next event. You know, they would have jumped in to defend it the way, the same way you see all of these people right now." trying to say hey let's honor him by killing off the thing he was trying to live to work and bring yeah. us so which i've never heard that a day in my life like honor a person by killing off what they was trying to bring us i ain't never same, heard that. same so, so yeah john you seen the trailer um well and you saw the first movie what were your thoughts seeing everything yeah i had a vastly different outlook than you two because I didn't grow up uh, reading comic mm-hmm. books. So uh, me watching the Black Panther as a uh, as an adult, you know, I was happy to see uh, a black superhero because, you know, as a kid, you really didn't see those. Right. Not until I got to my late teens and I actually was introduced to Blade. Right. Or in Spawn. Mm-hmm. In Spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I was happy uh, to see Black Panther. I was, uh, you know, I was very excited uh, to see a black production. It was a wonderful black production uh, in the Marvel universe. Um, But as mentioned before, I didn't have the same uh, disposition as you would have being that you grew up with uh, T'Challa and uh, the cast of characters in the Black Panther uh, franchise as a comic book. Uh, But you know, after taking in all that information, you know, after everyone's confirmation that you were rooting for Killmarger more than Black Panther, because Black Panther, I looked at uh, in the movie, like, damn, he's getting his ass whooped. Seems like every <laughs> uh, every freaking frame. Oh, man. It wasn't like that in Civil War. He was Mm-mm. he was a badass character in Civil yeah. War. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah, just. J- <laughs> You know, in hindsight, you know, I looked at it's like, yeah, man, I wish they would have kept Killmark. But, but after, you know, maybe a couple months that went by, I said, wait a minute, wasn't this supposed to be a superhero movie about T'Challa or something <laughs> like that? Not just completely, just glossed over that completely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I watched the I watched the trailer and I, just like you rock and I don't know about everybody else, but I only watched it once. Yeah, same here. Because it was very, it was very, it was finite. <laughs> It was finite in reference to T'Challa's character, and I really didn't enjoy that at all. 
um, no other superhero franchise. When it comes to someone with the Anglo-Saxon background, uh, Christopher Reeve, mm. um, they kept on piping out Supermans thereafter. Right. Uh, Batman, yeah, they recast Batman so many times. They just have people down in the pipeline. And I don't understand why with this particular franchise, why we can't have other people in the pipeline to pick up the torch and portray T'Challa um, as he should be. You because he didn't, he, he, I understand that, but he didn't die in the comic books last time I checked. Mm-mm. Well, he, he, he did die for a second and that there was two times uh, he was in a coma and he passed briefly. And that's when Shuri took the reins. But it was briefly. He was always there, and he was like working in the underworld. I forgot the name of the underworld, but he was always there. That's the. But he's there thing. now. He was always there. He didn't go anywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. he took a. He was on sabbatical, I guess. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. If why can't we take the same approach uh, when it comes to those uh, what do you call flagship uh, superhero characters? Why can't they take the same approach when it comes to? Uh, this particular character, and I understand why. I'm about to say, but, you, want uh, to, you want me to answer that? You want me to tell you? It, it, it was a rhetorical question. Okay, okay. It was, gotcha, it was gotcha. meant to be rhetorical. And what was that? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Just... So, um, yeah, I can only watch the trailer once. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, uh, I was very... I'm not going to say I was emotional, but once again, it just had a finite approach to it that um, really turn me off i'm going to watch the movie uh i just just like you rock and, and keith and everyone else uh, when i saw the mural <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, i just had a visceral reaction that okay mm-hmm. they are really putting t'challa to bed and that that hurt it yeah hurt. it did yeah. that hurt and it really did i didn't it i don't hurt. know I don't know. I, I I couldn't reconcile my feelings when it came to that. When it came to that, whatsoever. Yeah. And and to piggyback off of what you're saying, John, I'll tell you this: the same for me. Um, everybody else has been recast, and 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 you always hear somebody. There's an outlier that has something to say that oh, well, it was different universes. Michael Keaton, Val Kimmer, and George Clooney were in the same universe. That was the same. Mm-hmm. They had the same butler. Everything was the same. The only time they got out of that universe is when they moved on to um, Christopher Bell. Christian Christian Bell. Bell. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Incredible Hulk. We now find out that they were in the same universe because General uh, Thunder... What's his name? Thunder uh, Thunderbolt. I think that's his name. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Uh, Tony Stark met with him about Mm -hmm. getting... Tony Stark was... Yep. Tony Stark was in the end credits. Yep. So they've Mm -hmm. recast The Incredible Hulk three times. Um, now the Spider-Mans are somewhat in the same universe. You got three different Spider-Mans and the effect was not as the same. I, I think, and we, we spoke on this a little earlier where you, you were saying, you know, they would give the next actor some grace. The grace was there for Andrew Garfield. The grace was there for Tom Holland and nobody told me mm-hmm. McGuire didn't die. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, look at what, look at what the most iconic, villain of all time the joker we've mm-hmm. we've got four jokers one of them is dead the other three are still living you've got jack nicholson you've got um heath ledger you've got jared leto and you've got joaquin phoenix two of them have won uh, uh uh academy awards with that oh it's two more it's two more mm-hmm it was it's two more in the extended. Uh, it was a oh yeah, that's right. Bonus scene that's right. That's scene. right. In a new Batman. Yep. Was it? Yep. And from the CW show, there was a joke in the CW. And it was show. a Joker um, on the Fox show, The Gotham. That was a great show. See, um, see, yeah, and Mark Hamill still Joker. around playing the voice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? Hey, hey I, I, you know, outside of comic mm-hmm. books, I want to ask you all: Do you all recall just offhand? How many movies has there been in Hollywood from however long you can remember back of African Kings? Only one I can think of is Coming to America. Right. So it, it is technically two other ones, which are like Last King of, Last King of Scotland, oh, yes. right? Which he was yeah. terrible. Mm-hmm. 
And the other one kind of don't really count because that's Mufasa. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. Right. It so, counts. We're, we're going to let it count. Oh, right, we're going to let it count. And for me, count. and for me, and for me, I'm just, you know, I'm always connecting the dots because, uh, you know, Will Smith was trying to get a movie called The Last Pharaoh uh, made not too long ago. Michael B. and, um, and Kugler was trying to get uh mansa musa created i'm not sure where that stands maybe he was tied up with uh the the black panther mm-hmm. franchise but they i think that was on the docket that i've been trying to get that made and uh danny glover was trying to get the tucson little tour now he wasn't an african king but he was a a man who had the slave uprising and actually won mm-hmm. and um and but none of those at this point have come to fruition and like i said we could name three offhand over the last hundred years of African kings, including T'Challa. And part of me feels like T'Challa kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit. I feel like uh, Disney and Marvel has a little autonomy in Hollywood, more than maybe other oh, studios. Absolutely. And pe- and people maybe, they probably assumed it was going to be, oh, just it could be a little small Marvel movie, do 500 like Ant-Man, and keep it moving. They never expected it for it to be what it came, came to <laughs> be. And Part of me feels like this is kind of like a, a correction. Like, hold on, y'all really, y'all got African king. Hold on, hold on. Uh, the kings that come out of Hollywood from Africa are white. They're not mm-hmm. black. You know, like, let's stop stop the press. And I feel like, I hate this, you know, I, I feel like Chad with passing, unfortunately, was an easy layup for them to just jump yes. and say, you know what? We're not going to recast. We're not going to recast. And then they try to say, we're not going to do it out of respect for Chadwick. Like, for real, that's yeah. what you're going to do. So we, all the kids... All those kids, they're going to be like teenagers before or maybe grown paying bills before they teach the child right. again. Um, so I, I, I do think even outside of even within Marvel, because you just get you have duos and different versions all over the place and derivatives all over the place right now going on in Marvel. But I do think the larger um, view of it, like uh, the macro, micro, macro, macro, um, I believe that Hollywood itself I feel like Hollywood was like, hey, y'all wasn't supposed to do that. Right. Uh, I need y'all to get Absolutely. together. And now they can cash in on it because they know that black folks will come out regardless. Because if I give this representation of this black continent, country, whatever you want to call it, they're going to come out. They came out mm-hmm. in droves for that. And they made T'Challa such a disposable character that they'll come mm-hmm. out even if the star isn't in there. Even if the main characters, and, and, they're gonna yeah. black people are gonna show up and show out, and like you said earlier, you and Steph alluded to it, dressing in all white for the funeral. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know the scary part about it, Marvel knows we're gonna show up, and dude, this movie's gonna do a billion dollars. I already know it. It's gonna Man, do a billion. And and the scary, the, oh, I the moment they said they went casting T'Challa was the moment I started planning my night. <laughs> So it was the worst. <laughs> so. yeah, Disney, so. Disney Plus already got my year long subscription, so they'll get it from that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I feel right, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not telling anybody to do not to go see it, not to pay to go. I'm not that, but I will say for me, my biggest fear, my biggest fear, is for the Marvel execs or whoever made that decision to say, "Hey, look, we can kill T'Challa, and them Negroes still mm. will show up." And give us another billion. Mm. I, I I'm, yeah. I'm I'm scared that it's going to be true, and that will sol- further solidify. Now I'm not. I don't think we'll never get them again. But Marvel will say, "Hey, we just made 1.1 with without them, so it's no real rush to get them What's the anytime use? soon." I, that that's my biggest fear about it, man. That's just my because they because it was not about um, the. Uh, kill off Shuri when they was talking about recasting her because she wouldn't take the vac- the vaccine. Right. Oh, dude, remember that? <laughs> Man, look, look. You know, I, I, I'm about to get rock look, started. <laughs> Keith, no, Keith, Keith, Keith. You, you know I've been you know I've been following this from from the rooter to yeah. the tutor, man. And <laughs> and I'm telling you, the thing that I always point out to people is that when Chadwick Boseman passed, there was not any any adjustment to the production schedule Mm -hmm. any and that always stood out to me because if y'all remember james gunn he got caught with some old tweets or something they fired him and they 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 suspended guardians three indefinitely right right? right. but so so i'm like hold on if you lose a director and you got to suspend it indefinitely then how is it that you lose 
the the lead of your movie and production stays on schedule just as mm. fine, which leads me to believe I think they was already planning on kind of sideline. Mm. Wow. Because, I mean, you you at least got to take a pause to some degree, yeah. you know, something, you know, when you lose your, your, your lead actor, you got to take a, a, you know, let's, let's regroup yeah. this thing. Especially and, that much of an impact, you know, and how much they have played up, how much of, you know, we lost our king. I would have thought this would have been delayed mm-hmm. another three or four years. You know what, man? They could have delayed it and they could have did a Wakanda Forever uh series, like they're doing all the, all of those Disney mm-hmm. Plus series. Mm-hmm. And then, then you get you get your series and your Okoyes. You get everybody yeah. you want, you know. But I feel like the 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 Black Panther, that title, you know, that's reserved for T'Challa. Yes. You know what I mean? Like if you want to do a, a a side a side series on some supporting characters, because mm-hmm. don't for, don't no, don't get it twisted. Everybody in this movie are that's supporting right. characters. None that's of them right. are leads. Period. And and Disney Plus has shown with their other properties right now, with all of the Disney Plus shows they're showing is, hey, we got the lead character who gets mm-hmm. the movie, and we got the side characters that get the Disney Plus yeah. show. So, but outside of when it's the one black That's franchise, right. then we just push that on up and, <laughs> you know, use the Black Panther name. And, you know, so it's it's just, like I said, man, it's... it's um. I'm bootlegging it, man. Uh, hey, it brother. Well, Rob, we thank you Sorry. so much, man, for coming on. I will say this before we let you go. Um, I read what are supposed to be the spoilers that came out. Me and too. And if they go that route, I don't even know if I'm going to watch it on Disney+. Plus. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. But um thank you, brother, for giving yeah, your man. insight. Been waiting to get you on, man. Hope to have you on soon, soon, soon to get some more of your insight cool, cool, on things, cool. man. Really enjoyed you. Thank you so much for coming on with us, bro. Always thank much you, appreciated. Thank, thank you, Rob. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Stephanie. Paul George is garbage. Thank you, oh John. Oh, my God. <laughs> you said Paul George. That's what you did. You said the wrong oh, name. Paul yeah. George. I, I was thinking so tough. I got the right. I was thinking so tough. I got the name. Right. McDonald's All American Dunk Contest. Woo! That was horrible. I saw that. Oh yeah. my god! Did y'all see that? <laughs> yes, I did. That was horrible. Yeah. Oh yeah, my man. god, Steph. Yeah, man. So. Paul Pierce is terrible. Uh, he he, he you know, is not. Okay. Yeah, Paul. He, he he lucked up with the height because he didn't have the height. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rock man. Thanks, man. Bye, Rock. I- once again, thank you, Rock, for that discussion. That was much appreciated, brother. Really enjoyed that. Now, before we move in on to the last part of the show, John, can you please tell everybody how they can still go out and support the Short Desk Podcast? Absolutely. Facebook, please tag us with the Short Desk Podcast. Instagram. Tag us at, at the Short Desk Podcast and Twitter. Tag us with just simply the Short Desk. Uh, you can also leave us any show ideas, top tens, uh, topics, whatever topic. Uh, you can email those to the Short Desk Podcast at gmail.com. Also, continue to download us on Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. As it relates to Apple iTunes and Apple Podcasts, leave your five star ratings and your comments. Spotify, just leave us a five star rating. Good pods, continue to leave us a five star rating. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe our new content, our video content. You can apply the faces to the voices. It is the Short Desk Podcast. Now, it might be easier if you put the short desk together, space, then type in podcast. You can find the show quicker that way because I actually tried it myself just to put the short desk podcast with your normal spaces and I could not find our page whatsoever. So put mm. this short desk together, <laughs> space, podcast. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Thank you, sir. Steph. Let's get into the city this week that is supporting the Short Desk Podcast. Our city this week is Crystal River, Florida. Crystal River has a population of 3,162, and it is located in Citrus County, Florida. 
some notable citizens uh, that are from Crystal River are Major League Baseball player Mike Hampton, uh, Mae Jennings, who was a former first lady of Florida, and Wendy Richter, a pro wrestler. So thank you, Crystal River. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to support us. Listen, let's go ahead. First off, we're going to welcome on friend of the show. She is returning. She ain't been on in a long time because she ain't got time for her brother. So I have to catch her when she can sneak me in on some time. <laughs> Miss Jasmine, what's going on, baby? What's happening? Not so much, man. This is this was hard for me to do. <laughs> hey, darling. Hey, Steph. I'm disappointed in you, baby. Listen, I just got my ten. Like well, just now. Let's just go now. ahead and jump into it, y'all. The top ten. <laughs> <laughs> Such a quick transition. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't allow for any banter not whatsoever. Uh-uh. She already she came out with, with her guns blazing though with Steph. So I said, wait a minute. Let's just jump into it. Now, this top ten was picked by our esteemed colleague, Mr. Whitaker. Mm-hmm. Last week we put the poll up. It was uh Carter against Carter. And the best Carter won. The weaker Carter. Yeah, that. Dwayne Carter beat out Sean Carter. <laughs> but you top know what? Ten Lil Wayne songs against as, top as, ten. Jay-Z. As much as I dislike Lil Wayne, I am glad because I could not do a Jay Z top ten. And it would have been the same for me because I could probably come up with ten Jay Z right now. Listen, mm. no, I'd have fifty honorable mentions. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Fifty. <sighs> It's overrated. Yeah, so, no honorable mentions from Jay Z. Let's Jeff. go ahead and well, before we even get into the top ten, let's go with what we're going to do tomorrow or today, as you listen to this podcast, and post the new top ten poll. It is Miss Steph's choice this week on who will be against each other in the polls. And remember, as John stated, the polls, uh, you know, go support our, our social media pages. It will be in the stories for our Facebook, Instagram, and also on our Twitter page. And it also be on my personal uh, Facebook stories and Instagram page as well to vote. Please go and vote. We had a record number of people voting this last time. We had well over 400 people vote. That's a lot. Ooh, just to vote across all the social media streams. So thank you guys for voting. Steph, real quick, what you got for our next top tens? For our next top ten, you're going to have to choose between your top ten club bangers mm. versus your top ten Martin episodes. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Can we get a break? Top ten club bangers. Against top 10 Martin, <laughs> the TV show Martin episodes Episode. of all time. I oh, see my the smoke God. machine this going is, off right this now. This is what happens when you come for me when I did not send for you, John. Mm. I see you have low esteem for your esteem colleague. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. John, how do you feel about what she just picked? I am 24 carat upset. <laughs> How do you feel about it, Keith? As long as club bangers win, I'm good. <laughs> you already know how this gonna go. Yes, I do. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Happy voting! All right, this will be posted tomorrow uh, on. Well, let me stop saying tomorrow. This will be posted when this episode, when you hear this episode in the morning time, it'll be in the story. So please go out and vote. <laughs> All right, so top 10 Little Wayne songs of all time. We are going to go in the order of who went first last time, y'all? Do you remember for the last top 10? You. Okay, I went first. We're going to go with Big Time first. Our guest, Jasmine, second. I'll go third. And Steph, you will go last. Child, it don't matter. <laughs> oh, it will matter today. It will matter today. Let's go ahead and get started. John, what you got? Do you got any honorable mentions? And what's your number 10? All right. 
Honorable mentions. Stunting like my daddy. The block is hot. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I'm me. Steady mobbing. Three Pete. And sky's the limit. Oh, my gosh. My number 10 is best rapper alive. Oh, my word. Okay. Came in locked and loaded. Jasmine, I had told her earlier she couldn't use Stunt Like My Daddy because it wasn't technically a Lil Wayne song, but it was used. Jasmine, don't beat me up. It was, it was, it was popping bottles. Oh, no, it was popping bottles. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So Stunt Like My Daddy did work, though, because it was his album. All right. Steph, I mean, not Steph, Jasmine, your honorable mentions and your number 10, please. Okay. So my honorable mentions um mainly are like some of the mixtape stuff uh-huh. but um and i tried to keep some of the mixtape stuff off of my top 10 but a couple of them still made it on there because you just you can't go wrong with those but my honorable mentions um came from sorry for the wait rex and try me and then i got on no ceilings um shoes and throw it in the bag let's do it and pop it. and then from the drought mixtapes i got Upgrade, promise, new freezer, and you ain't know. Ooh, that's from Louisiana. Um, no, I think that one was from Trout Three. Okay. Trout and three. then my number ten, I got from the Carter Three, Three P. All right, all right. Thank you, ma'am. I'm up next. Um. Lil Wayne had the rap game in the choco until he started using auto tunes. Relax, relax. <laughs> um, he is the best rapper with the last name Carter alive. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lil Wayne has just, he goes on and not only does he kill regular songs, he will kill anybody's song on a mixtape mm. just like the other Carter uh, show me what you got um, <laughs> I didn't use any mixtape songs because it just would not have been fair to me I would have been here all day so I just used all his regular songs I excluded all of his mixtape songs so here is my honorable mentions strap in the block is hot lights off not like me get off the corner Hit you up. F with me now. Grown man. Shine. From my head down to my shoes. Uh, Jump jiggy. Acting ass. Way of life. Walk in. Go DJ. I miss my dogs. Bring it back. Hoes. Let's just talk about. Shine. The other shine with Jazzy Faye. Money on my mind. Oh no. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Money on my mind? Yeah. Honorable mention. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Receipt. <laughs> Shooter. I'm a D boy. Should have gave us a disclaimer for this damn. Mrs. Um, Officer. Came out. Let the bill. Let the beat bill. Drop the world. Come on now. I, I'm single. Right above it. Mega Man. Six foot seven. How to love. It's good. Outro. Interlude from the Carter Four. Technically, he's not on the song, but it was him. Tech is Tech Nine and Andre Three Thousand. So, oh yeah, that's why they make the top ten. No worries. Riches, love me, let it fly. Can't be broken and mahogany. I was going to read all of them. Damn it, number ten. She will, featuring Drake. Mm. That's my number two. Ooh. Stephanie, uh-huh. I'm going to use your full name on this one because I know how disappointed I am going to be and our listeners are going to be with your top 10 list. I don't even care this week because I understand y'all want to get Let's grace. go ahead and get y'all, into it, Steph. Y'all want to give, give grace to a crackhead. 
walking disappointment. We didn't have the woman beater and the woman cheater on this week. But you had the you had the drug addict, the heroin user. But we didn't have the woman beater and the cheater and the less talented Carter. So the trash. Nice nice filibuster. Um. So disclaimer, everybody out there. I don't listen to trash. So I don't listen to Lil Wayne. But. um, Cause he's the greatest. Anyway, um, so of course my top ten is gonna be all over the place because up until an hour, well, thirty minutes before we record, <sighs> we had three songs. So I just went on Apple Music to the Lil Wayne essentials, honey. And mm-hmm. just I can't wait to hear what you got on. Here. But the number ten is that um, <laughs> I couldn't stand this because they played it on the radio so much and I couldn't get it out of my head that lollipop song. Horrible oh. choice. Horrible song. Horrible choice. A horrible, horrible song. A horrible, horrible artist. Choice. A horrible, horrible song. artist. Horrible choice. Song. Horrible he's a, song. He's a horrible rapper, choice. Never a horrible Lyricist. song. Never horrible ever. choice. Horrible song. Horrible choice. Horrible song. I asked to sit this one out. And you said no. <sighs> Number nine. <laughs> Jasmine. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> Bring us back. See, I'm already disheveled. John, bring us back to reality number nine. Number nine, she will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jasmine, what do you got for number nine? Number nine from um the Carter Five, I got Uproar. Oh. All right. All right. Number nine for me. Oh, my soldiers, where you hit me, where you at? Oh, from 500 Degrees album, where you at? Yes. With Wayne. That's my number nine. Steph. Huh. Well, I only picked this number nine because 2 chains was on there. Siri. <gasps> horrible choice. Horrible song. Horrible choice. Horrible song. Horrible choice. Horrible song. Well, when you give me trash to work with, what are you expecting? Number eight. John. What do you have? Believe me. Oh, man. Okay. That's a tight song. Jasmine. Number eight. Number eight. Let the beat build. I'm kind of disappointed you had that on your honorable mentions, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was very tough to leave it off. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Number eight for me. The latest Carter song, Mona Lisa with Kendrick Lamar. Oh, Mm -hmm. Mona Lisa. Yes. Everybody loves Kendrick Lamar's verse, but Wayne really had a better verse. If you you really pay attention to the lyrics and the story that he was telling. it's This will be a Kendrick Lamar discussion I'm not going to get into, but I believe he's just a little bit overhyped. I prefer (laughs) that. Okay, now I know you're using. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yes. He's just a tad let's bit overhyped. You've been sipping I, some I, of that stuff. I, I prefer, ain't sipping listen, on. Let's let me tell go. you something. I prefer J. Cole over Kendrick. Oh, I, I agree with it. you on that now. I said it. That, that's why I say he's a well, little I agree with you on that. That's why I say he's a little overrated. Not because mm-hmm. of anything. I'm just saying, like, when they make the comparison, I personally okay. prefer okay. J. Cole over Kendrick. Lord, I, f- I apologize for calling you a drug. Absolutely. So you're point, sipping on something. Because <laughs> at that point, you got the I'm lean like, in your cup. Now. The lean is now, in your now, cup. Now, when you put it like that, I do prefer J. Cole over Kendrick Lamar. Uh-huh. Um, Finally, you're coming to your senses. But you're going to let us back down again. What is your number eight, I don't Steph? Know, this is all you name that I have on my list. Uh, number eight, I'm going to apply this to Keith. Trust nobody. Horrible choice. Horrible song. Horrible choice. Horrible song. Horrible Horrible song. John, bring us back, brother. What's number seven? I miss my dogs. Yes, sir. I love that song. I felt him in that one. I really did. He was hurt. Mm. Yeah, he was. He really was. Jasmine, what you got for number seven? Number seven, I got um, How to Hate featuring T-Pain. Oh, man. I like that song, too. Yeah. Number seven for me, featuring Mr. Robin Thick, Tie My Hands. Oh, yes. Love that song. Mm-hmm. He really felt him after Hurricane Katrina. He really had to come through with that. Steph, go ahead. Dreams. I actually like that song. 
Right. Number yeah. six, John. <laughs> I'm way more fly than you, featuring Jazzy Faye. Whoa! Yes, yes, yes. I forgot about that. All right. Number six, Jasmine. Money on my mind. Oh man. All man. right. Number six for me. Whew. It's that hustle of music. Ooh. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. All right. Let me come down from this high. Steph. Hush, because my number six is a song that you already know. <laughs> Let me come down from this high. <laughs> what, is saying, what is wrong with you? Hush. <laughs> you know Steph is a Southern woman because I first said, hush. <laughs> come on with bone. it, Steph. My number six is a song you already named. Mona Lisa is my number six. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Because Kendra carried him. Go ahead. <sighs> All that goodwill. Just going down the drain. Number five, John, what you got? Hustler music. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Jasmine, what you got for number five? Number five, I got Visine. I don't even know if that's on a mixtape or album or what. It was just something I heard a few years ago. Mm. I really like it. I think that's on a mixtape. Is it? I think. I think. I think. Okay. Good, though. Uh, number five for me. Ooh, where is it? Where's my number five? Oh. Hold on, y'all. I kind of lost my track here. Oh, number five. <laughs> He's gonna go so opposite. He killed him, embarrassed him. It ain't the first time he'd been embarrassed on a song. Um, and he hasn't been back on a song with him again. I'm about to get right off of here. Hey, Mr. Carter. He's never in that. Don't play with me. Where have you been? Don't play with me. Which portion have you watched? Never embarrass him. And they been. I knew it. I hate it here. Uh, <laughs> bears. Listen, a- a- excellent song by two, in my opinion, two of the goats. I-, I really enjoyed it, and it was a great song. So, Mr. Carter is my number five. Steph, come on with it. My number five is also Mr. Carter. All right. Okay. Number four, John. A Millie. All right, I. Uh, Okay. You know, I really enjoyed the original version of that song. There's an original version that didn't get played on the radio. Whatever happened to Corey Guns? He's so still rapping. Out. He just put an album out uh, not too long ago. It was all right. It wasn't what I was mm. expecting. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he raps anything of substance. He just has that style. That I don't know. He don't okay. really fit in anywhere. He's right. Filler. There you go. There yeah, you he's go. a filler. Yeah, there you go. Um, Jasmine, number four. Um, number four, I have Swag Surf. Oh man! Oh wow! Yeah, I said I didn't use I couldn't, mixtape. I couldn't leave but it I couldn't that leave is it my number one. <laughs> That's Listen. hard. That's hard to be. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. He blame took him. that song from them boys, and wow. Yeah. Whew. Number four for me. I'm gonna go old school. First album, Wayne. After you back it up, then stop. Drop, oh, drop, yeah. drop, drop it like it's hot. Um, Jasmine, I don't know you was out there with us, but. And that song would come on at Caribbean Beach Club on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Steph, you know, you're actually making me feel good these last two picks. What's your number four? Oh, my number four is Mrs. Officer. All right. I like Mrs. Officer. I don't, I just, I, I should have fit it on my top 10, but I couldn't, but I love that song. All right, Steph. Okay. Number three, John. Mrs. Officer. All right. 
Okay, look at y'all. Jasmine, what's your number three? My number three is Go DJ. All right. Three. Number three for me, um, off the first Carter, BM Jr., Birdman Jr. He really went in on the song. The only thing that I don't like is Birdman talking, but it's okay. Uh, Steph, man, let's make it four in a row here. Number three. Um, My number three is six foot, seven foot. Okay. All right. That ain't bad. That's a good song. Okay. This is painful. (laughs) Number two, John, what you got? Ice cream paint job. Oh, my oh, yes. God. Yes, yes, oh, yes. He killed that damn song. Oh, poor Duro. Mm. He was never heard from again <laughs> after the way he came <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay. Number two, Jasmine, what you got? Number two, I have Holly Weezy. Off All of, right. um, sorry for the wait, too. All right. <clears throat> Number two for me, one of my favorite songs, Nightmares of the Bottom. Yes. Oh, man. Love that song. Steph, man, look here. Let me tell you something. The only thing, the only way you're, you could redeem this, the, the last half of your, of your pick so would be if Show Me What You Got Freestyle is number one. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your number two, Steph? <laughs> Go DJ. All right, right. Good Steph. Damn. Insane. All right, we get down to it, y'all. It's number one. It's number one time. John, what is your number one Little Wayne song of all time? <laughs> Georgia Bush. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> okay. Jasmine, what you got for number one? My number one, I took it all the way back to the beginning when he jumped off the porch with Block is Hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my number one. Oh, uh, yeah, that video he did jump off the porch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My number one song of all time. My wife is sick of me playing this song, but I love it. Because of the lyrics, he was able to play it for his mama. He got a, a legend on a song, and it used to sample one of my favorite songs of all time. A very smart way of sampling a song, too, because it used the ending. Comfortable featuring Babyface. That is my number Oh, one. comfortable. I love that song. Love right. it. Love it. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, I, I like that. <sighs> all right. We've come to the end here, y'all. Um, you know... It started off very rough. Horrible choice. Horrible song <laughs> by Miss Steph. But we're here at number one. She's on a streak. Let's see if we're going to end it right. Steph, what is your number one song for Lil Wayne? A Millie. Horrible choice. That ain't bad. Horrible Don't do nothing like that. Now, that ain't bad. Choice. Horrible. I, I, <laughs> I give it to you. All right. <laughs> we got through it, y'all. Our that was has been tested. So yeah. That was the top 10 all time best Carter rapper songs of all time Use that we just went through. D Wayne Carter, Little Wayne. Sean Corey is Carter forever. is the best Carter. He does not hit women and he wouldn't cheat on a woman like Beyonce. He ain't now, hit nobody. He does we hit on women. Got... Didn't he beat up his girlfriend? He did not. Thank you, he Jasmine, for up. joining us. We really enjoy um, <laughs> you being on. No, Lil I Wayne think makes... we still should do a Jay-Z one, though, just to put Steph in the hot seat. Mm. Oh, no. we will. Oh, it's gonna come back around. It's gonna come back around. Oh, I won't be there. I'll be out of. I'll be out of town that week. She'll be here. (laughs) She'll definitely be here. I'll be sick that week. (laughs) I have laryngitis. Ah, yeah, we we need to do that. I can Jasmine, thank you again. Really appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. It's always fun. Had a fun time doing this top ten. Got to get you back on again. No problem. Thank you. We are. 
the short desk podcast holla at your girl and your boys it's so hard for me to sit back here in this studio looking at a guy out there hollering my name when last year i spent more money on spilled liquor and bars from one side of this world to the other than you made you're talking to the rolex wearing diamond ring wearing kiss stealing woo, wheeling dealing Limousine, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these gators down. <laughs> <laughs>